In an alternate 1980s, World War III is in full swing with the Soviet Union, now known as Russia, making significant gains and expanding its armies. They have conquered major parts of Europe and are now pushing west towards North America. The story opens in the American city of Calumet, where a boy named Jed drives his younger brother Matt and his friend to school. As the history teacher is conducting class, they notice troops landing by parachute outside the school, armed with heavy weaponry and speaking in a foreign language. The teacher goes outside to investigate but is shot and killed, and the soldiers begin firing at the school, causing chaos and killing several students. Jed and the group, including Matt's friends Robert, Danny, Darrell, Ardvark, and Arturo, manage to flee the school and make it to Robert's father's sporting goods store, where they stock up on supplies and weapons before heading to the mountains to escape the invading troops. Along the way, they come across a roadblock manned by Soviet troops, but are able to escape with the help of a U.S. Army helicopter. The story reveals that the Soviet Union, with the aid of Cuba and Nicaragua, is attempting to take over Calumet and the entire nation. While a Cuban colonel named Bella directs his troops to gather records of gun sales at a local sporting goods store, the three boys arrive in the mountains and begin to adjust to their new surroundings. As experienced campers, Jed and Matt have little difficulty surviving in the wilderness by fishing, hunting, and foraging for food. After a few weeks, the trio ventures back into the city, which is now under the control of enemy soldiers. Inside a grocery store, they inquire about their families, only to learn that those deemed a threat have been imprisoned in a re-education camp. The boys eventually reach the camp and find their father, who has been badly beaten. They also learn that their mother was killed by the soldiers. Despite their emotional response, their father urges them to avenge their mother's death. Robert, however, is unable to locate his father in the camp. When they visit their neighbor, Mr. Mason, he informs them that Robert's father was executed for missing weapons from his store, which were the same weapons the boys had taken to the mountains. This news deeply affects Robert, but his friends are able to console him. Later, Mr. Mason shows the boys his granddaughters, Tony and Erica, who are in hiding from the troops. He asks the boys to help escort the girls to a safe location, which they agree to do. As they make their way to the mountains on horseback, Darrell spots three Soviet soldiers approaching the area and alerts the rest of the group. When the soldiers discover Jed and his friends hiding behind rocks, a confrontation ensues, and the boys are able to defeat the soldiers. Colonel Bell is seeking revenge for his fallen men, confronts Darrell's father, the mayor of Calumet, about his son's involvement. Despite the mayor's attempts to defend Darrell and protect the innocent citizens, Colonel Bella orders the execution of several civilians, including Jed and Matt's father. The death of their family members deeply affects the group, but Jed encourages them to continue fighting for their nation. The group comes up with a plan, and Erica goes to a gas station where Soviet soldiers are refueling. She leaves a bag containing explosives, which the soldiers dismiss as a harmless gesture, but the explosives detonate, killing several men. The remaining soldiers pursue Erica, but the youth group ambushes them and kills them. This success gives the group renewed motivation to continue fighting against the enemy forces using whatever arms and ammunition they can find. They also begin to refer to themselves as the Wolverines. One day, Tony discovers a lieutenant colonel of the United States Air Force, Andrew Tanner, resting near their camp. Recognizing him as an ally, Tony brings him to the camp and provides him with food. Andrew informs the group of the current state of the war, including that nuclear strikes have destroyed several American cities, and that the enemy, primarily Cuban troops, infiltrated the U.S. through Mexico and caused widespread destruction. He also mentions that the Soviet armies have captured much of Southern America and Northwest Canada, but that American forces have been able to hold them off at the Rocky Mountains and the Mississippi River. He also mentions that the Russians are no longer using nukes. He shares that his family is missing and potentially captured by the Soviets, and he assists the group with his military expertise. Together, they successfully take down a large number of Soviet soldiers and acquire a significant arsenal. Andrew then presents a detailed plan to the group to overtake a Soviet base camp, which they execute successfully. However, their actions draw the attention of a Soviet general who orders retaliation against innocent civilians and orders the elimination of the Wolverines. The Wolverines are seen enjoying a rugby match after their victory, and Tony, a member of the group, asks Andrew about his personal life, specifically about his wife. While Tony has developed feelings for Andrew, the Wolverines face a dangerous encounter with Soviet tanks while observing an ongoing war from a distance. Andrew and another member, Ardvark, are killed in the battle, leaving the group devastated, especially Tony who had a close relationship with Andrew. The Wolverines bury their fallen comrades and continue on with their mission. They come into contact with a Soviet Special Forces unit, but using their superior tactics and equipment, they are able to defeat them and capture their leader. However, upon interrogating him, the leader refuses to reveal any information and provokes the group with taunts. 
In response, the Wolverines execute him. The group then examines the enemy's equipment, including a portable tracking device. The Wolverines discover that one of their members, Darl, had been implanted with a tracking device by the Soviets and that his father had been the one to turn him over. Despite his pleas for mercy, Darl is killed by Robert, who believes that Darl's betrayal has put the entire group at risk. The Wolverines then come across a group of Soviet trucks transporting food and decide to steal it, but their happiness is short-lived when they are ambushed by Soviet helicopters. Tony is critically injured and Jed carries her on horseback as they try to escape. Robert manages to shoot down one of the helicopters but is killed by another one. As Tony's condition deteriorates, she requests Jed for a grenade to end her suffering. After some reluctance, he grants her wish and leaves her. Tony chooses to die on her own terms. Later, Soviet soldiers, including their general, discover Tony's body and confirm her death, but an explosion caused by the grenade she dropped kills one of the soldiers. That night, the remaining Wolverines come up with a plan in which Jed and Matt, who is Tony's brother, will attack the Soviet headquarters in Kalamut as a diversion while the others escape to live in safety. Erica expresses her desire to join the attack, but Jed insists that someone needs to survive. The two brothers carry out the attack, killing several soldiers but Matt ultimately gets shot. Jed kills the Soviet commander but is also injured. As he carries his injured brother away, they are spotted by a Soviet Colonel Bella, who lets them go out of mercy for their loss. The two brothers sit together in a park and reflect on their past, eventually passing away in each other's arms. Meanwhile, Danny and Erica successfully make it to a safe haven in America. The final scene shows a partisan rock and American flag, symbolizing America's victory. The inscription on the rock reads, In the early days of World War III, guerrillas, mostly children, placed the names of their lost upon this rock. They fought here alone and gave up their lives so that this nation shall not perish from the earth. Thank you for watching and please subscribe for more stories. Let us know in the comments what do you think, could this scenario really happens considering ongoing situation.